Hi, so got a very nice ECG for you here. It's a very simple one, very quick one, but it makes a really nice point. So we're going to have a look at this ECG from a patient you're asked to see in the emergency department, you're asked to sign this ECG, and you probably look at this and at uh, first glance, you don't think there's too much wrong with it. It's going a little bit slow. You'd be tempted to think it's just a sinus bradycardia. However, look at those T waves. They're a bit spiky, right? They look a bit unusual. So you could be thinking, well, what is that? Is that lung QT syndrome? What's going on with those T waves? Well, let's just move on a little bit and have a look at the rhythm strip. If we look at that a little bit more carefully and just notice here, before every QRS complex, you have got a P wave. It's a bit of a spiky one, a bit of a peaked one, but it's definitely there. The reasonable PR interval. Then you've got your QRS. Then you've got this really late spiky T wave, or is it? And then you've got the same again, and it repeats all the way through that rhythm strip. But have a look at the difference between the P waves and what appear to be spiky T waves. There is no difference. They're exactly the same, the same morphology. So those aren't T waves, those are P waves. And if you want some reassurance that they're definitely P waves and not T waves, then just mark this. To put a little pen marking the distance between those two P waves the P wave and what appears to be a spiky T wave and move it along and you'll see that the gap is even, it's regular because there's a regular P wave rhythm, but only every second P wave is conducting. So this is actually Mobit type two, second degree heart block. So there's a really nice ECG. If you see those spiky T waves, think about Mobit type two heart block.